Okay, welcome back everybody. This is Mr. Oliver. Here is basically part two of yesterday's lesson on subtracting mixed numbers with borrowing. Now I'm going to go ahead and start off with an example where we're modeling. And in this example we have four and two thirds minus one and three fourths. So what you would do is you would just go about this problem the way you normally would go about any problem. You would just go ahead and find an LCD, at least common denominator and our denominators are 4 and 3. So hopefully we're not struggling with this at this point and we know how to do that, but the LCD or the LCM of 3 and 4 is 12. And I'm going to follow the same rules I always have. If the denominator changes, the numerator changes. And in both instances, the denominator changed. changed. This one changed from a 3 to a 12 and this one changed from a 4 to a 12. Now all you have to do next is just figure out what by what factor did the denominator change by. So in this instance, 3 changed by a factor of 4. So that's what I'm going to multiply the 2 by. In this instance, right here, the 4 changed by a factor of 3. So we're going to multiply by 3. So 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 3 is 9. So now you have your problem all set up and you're ready to subtract. And at this point in the problem, you know, if you try to subtract it, it seems like everything's okay. 4 minus 1 is 3. I agree with that. But you run into a problem right here, 8 and 9. 8 minus 9 is actually negative 1. And we don't want to get a negative. This is not going to be a negative problem. We cannot take 9 away from 8. So we have to borrow here. Like I said, we cannot take 9 away from 8. And here's my model. I have in this model four whole numbers, four whole number strips. And we have 2 thirds of a whole. So if I try to take away 9 twelfths from that, I'm not gonna, that's not going to work. So I'm going to make it match up with my common denominator. And here we go, 4 and 8 twelfths. And I'm going to go ahead and follow the math here. 4 and 8 twelfths, that's what all this is right here. This is 4 and 8 twelfths. 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's 8 twelfths right there. And I'm going to try to take away 1 and 9 twelfths. If I try to take away 1 and 9 twelfths, well, I'll just remove this, pretend this is going away, and remove that. That, I just took away 1, check, and now I want to take away 9 twelfths. Well, down here I've got twelfths, so I'm going to cross these out. There's 1, there's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I need to take away one more, so where do I get one more from? Well, I'm going to have to take this, I'm going to have to take this one right here, and turn that into twelfths. So how do I turn that into twelfths? Well, there's a lot of ways you can turn it into twelfths, but I think it's easiest to turn it into fourths, and then I'll take each fourth and turn that into a third. I'll split it into three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So now I have twelve twelfths, and now I have my uh, extra twelfth to take away. So what did we do there? We took away, we took away one whole. That went away. Sorry, this is messy, but that's how this kind of goes. And then we took away 9 twelfths. And when I did that down here, I only had 8 twelfths. So borrowing was required, or regrouping. So then I regrouped this fraction strip into twelfths, because we needed to take away one more twelfth. And where did we get that one more twelfth? We got it right there. Now this is a total mess, but this is good mathematics right here. So what do we have at the very end? What's our answer? Well, let's look at what we have left. I'm counting one and two holes. So we've got two. And in terms of the last fraction strip there, well, we only took away 1 twelfth, but what we have there is 11 twelfths. So 2 and 11 twelfths. Okay, now let's move on from modeling and into just the computational part of this, where we just figure it out using our rules for adding and subtracting fractions. So I've got the steps right here listed, and you can write these down in your notes. You should write them in your notes. And I would say steps 1 and 2 are very important. Step three uh, can change depending on what fractions you're offered. So I'll talk about that in just a second. But yeah, definitely write down these steps. But you might want to put a little asterisk next to step three because that step depends on what you're given. I'm going to go ahead and set up the common denominator and, and do all that. And I'm going to kind of speed through that because I'm going to assume you know how to do that. So I'm going to find a common denominator here. Okay, so at this point, you might notice that you cannot take 7 away from 4. We could take 4 away from 7, but not 7 away from 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to regroup. So when I regroup, I'm going to take the 8 
and I'm going to turn it into a 7. Why did I turn it into a 7? Because we're borrowing one whole. We're not borrowing 10, we're not borrowing 100, we're borrowing one whole, just like we did in the previous lesson. So the 8 now is a 7, it's one less. And where are we going to put that one whole? Well, we're going to put the one whole on the other side. We're going to put it in the fraction, because that fraction, this 4, needs to be bigger. And what are we going to make it? We're going to make it 10 tenths, because one whole equals 10 tenths. So why did we use 10 tenths? And that kind of alludes to this step right here. Why did we use 10 tenths? Because that was the common denominator we found already. So whatever the LCD is, that's what you use. If the LCD is 8, we would add 8 eighths. If the LCD was 12, we would add 12 twelfths. It depends on whatever the LCD is. So now I've got 4 tenths plus 10 tenths, and that equals 14. So this becomes a 14. So now we can do the math. And again, this is, I'm telling you, this is a little bit messy. That's how these problems get. They get a little, little bit messy. So now let's do the, the math here. 7 minus 2 is 5. 14 minus 7, now that's doable. 14 minus 7 is 7. And don't uh, subtract denominators. So 5 and 7 tenths. There we have it. Don't forget to reduce if possible. And this one doesn't reduce. But if needed, always keep that in mind. You need to reduce. Here's the next problem. I'm going to go ahead and just get us up to the point where we have to... Uh, either subtract them or where uh, we might have to borrow. I'm going to go ahead and solve this and at least get us to a point where we need to borrow. So at this point right here, you'll notice that you cannot take 16 away from 15. You could take 15 away from 16, but subtraction doesn't work that way. You cannot change the order of a subtraction problem. You guys should all know that. 5 minus 2 equals 3. Does 2 minus 5 equal 3? No. That does not equal 3. It equals negative 3. So you cannot change the order of a subtraction problem and, and get away with thinking that it's the same thing. So we're going to do 16 minus 15, which we cannot do, so we're going to borrow. We're going to borrow from the whole number and make this 2. Now if we borrowed 1, we need to give it back somewhere. So where are we going to give it back to? We're going to give it back to the fraction that's too small. We need that 15 to be bigger. So what are we going to add to the 15? And if you're thinking 18 18, so you're exactly right. Why did we use 18? Because that was our LCD. Our least common denominator was 18. 15 plus 18, don't forget to add, 15 plus 18 is 33. So now this is 33 18. So here, a lot going on in this problem. So now we can figure it out. 2 minus 1 is 1. 33 minus 16 is 17. And don't subtract denominators. 1 and 17 eighteenths. And we're through. You'll notice here that the steps that I wrote down are pretty much the same except for step 3. Because that de step depends on what the denominator is. Our denominator was 18, therefore we added 18. If the denominator was 6, we would have done 6 6. If the diameter was 5, we would have added 5 fifths. Okay, moving right along. Here's our next example. I'm going to go ahead and get us to the point where we may need to or may not need to borrow. Okay, like our previous example here, we need to borrow. We cannot take 7 away from 6. So what do we do? We borrow from the whole number. Again, we need, we need 1. We need something more. So that becomes 3. And then what do we add to 6 eighths? What do we want it to be? We want to do 8 eight because that was our LCD. So we're going to add 8 eighths. So what is 6 plus 8? That is 14. So now, instead of 6 minus 7, we have 14 minus 7. And it's all set now to subtract. So I'm going to subtract 3 minus 3 is nothing. We don't really need to put a 0 there, but I'm going to put it there. And 14 minus 7 is 7. Eights. So it's a, that's our answer. We don't need to write 0 and 7 eighths, just 7 eighths. And that is in lowest terms. Take a look at the steps. The steps are all basically the same, except for this one. This one we added 8 eighths because that was our denominator. What does 8 eighths equal again? It equals 1 whole. Where did we get the 1 whole from? We got it from the 4. Okay, let's go into this example here. We have 7 and 5 eighths minus 1 and 5 six. And I'm going to go ahead and find a common denominator and get to the point where we may need to borrow. Just like what has happened before, 
we have to borrow again. We cannot take 20 away from 50. So let's borrow from the 7 and make that a 6. And then what are we going to add to 15 24 We're going to add 24 24 So what does 24 24 equal? It equals 1. Where did we get 1 from? We got it from the 7. Some people are a little bit confused as to where those numbers come from. So now let's add it all up. 15 plus 24 is 39. Now this can be subtracted, 39 minus 20. So 6 minus 1 is 5, 39 minus 20 is 19. And there's your answer, 5 and 19 24ths. Okay, here's another one. Uh, you might want to just go ahead and do this one on your own. I'm not going to really talk you through this one. Pause the video, try it on your own. Really try this on your own. Don't just watch me do it. Try this on your own first, and then if you're confused, hit play and you can see how it's done. Alright, there's your answer, 4 and 3 fourths. If you didn't understand that, just go back and try it again and see what happened. Make sure you guys follow these steps to a T. Okay, that does your lesson on subtracting mixed numbers with borrowing. This was not an easy lesson. These are very difficult concepts. Sixth graders normally have never done this before, and this can be tricky. It's going to take some work. So please let me know if you're confused, and I can help you out in class. All right. See everybody.